So the basic idea behind this problem is that there is an, a location function, a velocity function, and an acceleration function. And in case those ideas are new for you in calculus, which they probably should be if this is your first semester calculus course, velocity is the derivative of the location function. So if you have a function s of t that tells you where you are at a certain time, then you could plot that function. You know, you could you could follow on the t uh, along the x-axis or the t-axis and then see where you are after a certain amount of time. Well, if you're finding the rate of change of where you are, you're finding the velocity. It's kind of like uh, the speed of a car would be the velocity of a function that, like on a GPS, it tells you how far you've traveled after a certain amount of time. So in other words, velocity is the first derivative, okay? And acceleration is the second derivative because how fast, you know, you sit in that car and you speed up or slow down, the rate of change of your speed is is what, what we describe as acceleration. You know, you hit the pedal to the metal on a car, we say you've got high acceleration because the rate of change of your speed of your car is very fast. All right, well, uh, this is the, the original function, the first derivative and the second derivative. And we're supposed to identify which graph is the... Original function, which one's the first derivative, which one's the second derivative. Um, so that can be a challenge. Let's see. We can take a guess. Like, here, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is wrong, but I'm going to guess that this is our location function. If I'm right, then the velocity function should be at zero at time t equals one, two, three, right? Because the, the, the velocity function is, is the derivative of this orange function, of the location function. Look, the derivative at t equals 3, that's the slope at t equals 3, the instantaneous slope. If you were to draw a tangent line, it would be perfectly horizontal, which means you better have 0 for, um, for your derivative. So this could potentially be our velocity, okay? because this function is 0 when time t equals 3. Right, so when you look at these functions, think about the y values. The, the for the for the location function, the derivative is zero here. Uh, the derivative maybe at another point. How about how about down here? When t equals zero, the derivative should be something positive, okay? Because it's increasing, and that does match the velocity function up here. We have some sort of positive slope. You're thinking about uh, with the derivative function, the y values are the slopes of the original function. And then when you're trying to match up the acceleration function, I think I might have guessed right. The acceleration function represents the slopes of um, the slopes of the velocity function. So here, this velocity function at time t equals like negative uh, negative zero point seven, we should have zero for the sec for the acceleration function because the acceleration function is a derivative of the velocity function. So for the velocity function, at time t equals negative 0 0.7, a tangent line drawn here would have a slope of 0. Look at our green graph. The y value is 0. That matches. And then here, t equals 0, the velocity is positive, because if you were to draw a tangent line, it would have a positive slope. It's increasing as you read it from left to right. And look, the acceleration is positive for the, for the y values. And then another place where it should cross is here, t equals like 1.5. The, the slope should be zero again because if you were to draw a tangent line, it would be perfectly level. And the same thing with the acceleration function. It's gone back down to zero. And now the slope should be negative because we're going down, and the acceleration function is negative. So I actually guessed correctly. I was trying to guess wrong. Um, those, those are definitely tricky questions. So let me try to do another one. Sometimes hearing the explanation a second time will help. Oh, this is a different problem, so I might have to get the whiteboard. Position of a particle... Uh, position is here. I'm supposed to find the function that describes its acceleration at time t. I think at this point in the course we haven't talked about how to evaluate a derivative without using... Here, I'm going to pause the video just to make sure. But at this point in the course, there, there's two ways of finding a derivative. Using the limit definition and then using like the power rule, product rule, chain rule, all those other things that you might not have heard of. So let me check and see if we've heard of that at this point. Okay, so we have to use kind of the longer way right now because we haven't talked about the other way of evaluating a derivative. So position of a particle is given by s of t. We said that v of t, velocity, that's just the first derivative of s of t. It's the function, or sometimes it's not a function, but it represents all the slopes of s of t. 
Remember, because that prime symbol up here means derivative, means all the instantaneous slopes. So to find that, we could find the limit as h approaches 0 for s of t plus h minus s of t divided by h, our definition of a derivative. Okay, so s of t plus h, that just means we're supposed to plug t plus h everywhere where we see a t. So this is going to be negative uh, 3t plus h squared plus 6t plus h minus 1. That's what this is. We still have to subtract s of t. And I'm going to put it in parentheses because we need to subtract the whole s of t. And then divide that by h. So we have a divide by 0 problem. And just, just remember what we're finding here. This is s prime of t, right? Because this is a derivative. This is a derivative, except this time we didn't put a center. We're saying we want the derivative for every single point. So we're finding s prime of t. In other words, we're finding the velocity. So um, just some yucky, yucky expansion here. The algebra here might take a little bit. You might need to you do some scratch paper work off to the side, but I can help you for at least this problem. That's going to be 2th, so that's negative 6th minus 3h squared. I, I expanded this. I did t plus h times t plus h, and then I multiplied by negative 3. And then here I'm going to use the distributive properties. So that's 6t plus 6h minus 1. And I'm going to do plus 3t squared minus 6t plus 1. Distributed that negative sign. Let's see, what cancels out? We have a minus 6t and a plus 6t. That's gone. We have a negative 3t squared and a plus 3t squared. We have a negative 1 and a plus 1. So I think that's everything. And it's not by coincidence. It's because of how the limit definition of a derivative works. This is what we're left with. And look, everything's being divided by h, so you can just cancel out one of the h's here. Everything's being divided by h. So now it's the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 6t minus 3h plus 6. There's no divide by 0 problem, so now you can just plug in 0 in for h. So if you plug 0 in here, you've got negative 6t plus 6. So that's our derivative, okay? The derivative, here I'm going to clear this, negative 6t plus 6. Velocity, which is the first derivative of the location function, is negative 6t plus 6. But they wanted the acceleration, so we got to go do that again. The acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. It's all the slopes of the velocity. So that means we've got to use the limit definition of the derivative again, now just with velocity. So it's a v of t plus h, using the limit definition of the derivative, subtracted by v of t over something, over h. So we're plugging in t plus h everywhere where we see a t. So this is negative 6, t plus h plus 6. So far, all I've written is this piece. Now I need to subtract v of t, which is negative 6t plus 6. That's all being divided by h. So you can distribute here. That's negative 6t minus 6 plus 6. Distribute the minus sign. So that's plus 6t minus 6. Every term that doesn't have an h should cancel out if you've done this right. The limit as h approaches 0. Negative 6t and plus 6t, those cancel. Uh, oh, this is a poorly, oh, there's no h here. I dropped my h. Negative 6 times h makes negative 6h. Let's see if I messed anything else up. Doesn't look like it because 6 minus 6 cancels. Look, now you have negative 6h divided by h. It just gives you negative 6. The limit as h approaches 0 of something constantly negative 6. It doesn't matter what h is because there's no variable there. It's just going to be negative 6. So that is your acceleration function. All that work, your answer is negative 6. That's the acceleration function. So we need acceleration, which means we need the second derivative. So here comes the first derivative. 
using the limit definition of the derivative. Remember, with the limit definition of, definition of the derivative, you plug in t plus h in here for t. Uh, so that means we're going to do 3t plus h squared minus t plus h. That's the first part. And then we're supposed to subtract s of t divide by h. In case you're wondering where that's coming from, I guess I should keep emphasizing this. This is s, uh, yeah, s of t plus h minus s of t over h. We don't have a number. We're doing it for every number in the function. So that's why we don't plug in like a 1 or a 2. We're just doing it for t. So that's what's going on here. Uh, so dropping a little bit of the limit notation. This part, I've expanded this uh, three times in the past 20 minutes. So that's why I'm able to get this real quick. Uh, but what you'll want to do is take t plus h and multiply it to t plus h and then distribute the 3 to simplify that. 6th plus 3h squared. Distribute the minus sign. Uh, distribute the minus sign. So blah, 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 limit again. Uh, the 3t squared and the minus 3t squared cancel out. A minus t and a plus t cancel out. So this is the, now the limit of 6th plus 3h squared minus h over h. So we're dividing everything by h, so we can cancel out an h from each term. It's not really canceling out, it's like dividing by 1. Uh, divide, h divided by h would just make 1 in the back here. So put the limit notation back in there. This is the limit as h approaches 0 for 6. I'll write it out. It's getting messy. Limit as h approaches 0 for 6t plus 3h minus 1. This one doesn't have a divide by 0 problem. We can just plug in 0 in for h. And now the limit as h approaches 0 is 6t minus 1, because when you plug in 0 for h, it makes that middle term disappear. So we just found the first derivative. We need the second derivative for acceleration. First derivative is 6t minus 1. The second derivative, acceleration, is going to be found by, again, using the limit definition of the derivative. So I'll write it out this time. Except this time it's for 6. It's for, um, we use this for our function because it's, it's, we're trying to find the derivative of the derivative. So t plus h minus s prime of t over h. So this is the limit as h approaches 0. Plug in t plus h in for t. So this here, oh, sorry, this is this right here. This is this. And then we subtract all of s prime of t, all of the derivative of s, the velocity in other words. It's all being divided by h. So that's the limit. And as h approaches 0, distribute the 6. Just another cleanup job, right? Combine like terms to so distribute the minus sign here. So that's the limit as h approaches 0. Um, the minus 1 and the plus 1 cancel. The 6t minus 6t cancels. So we have 6h over h. And if you've seen the other videos, you know what's happening here. The h's cancel. Limit as h approaches 0 of a constant 6 is still a constant 6. It doesn't matter what h is. So we just found the acceleration is a constant 6.